Good morning. Good morning. Our opening hymn this morning is 493. 493. Right two continues on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The best be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, 
To you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. of your people, and in our time grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lessons. The first reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 18. Moses summoned all Israel and said to them, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall hate heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 111, found on page 754 in the Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 111, page 754. Let us pray the psalm in unison. Hallelujah, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and splendor and his righteousness endures forever. He makes his marvelous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gives food to those who fear him. 
He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who act accordingly have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge, since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol. And their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat, so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hymn 706, 706. Oh, 
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples went into Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This annual report to the congregation looks very different from previous years, perhaps because the year of 2020 looks very little like any previous year in any of our lives. My report always includes five areas of ministry service, outreach to the community, worship, education, evangelism, and pastoral care. 2020 started out as any year with a successful and delicious annual meeting. A movie night in the parish hall, weekly godly play, monthly pint with the priest, monthly centering prayer, weekly Sunday morning worship, with an occasional second cup at our amazing coffee hours, and our Shrove Tuesday Pancake Supper, benefiting the Green Chair Garden. In our book study, we completed Searching for Sunday by Rachel Held Evans and started another book by her, Inspired. Ecumenically, we worshiped on Ash Wednesday at First Presbyterian Church and then later in the day at St. James. On Fridays in Lent, we walked the Stations of the Cross at St. James. We began a Lenten series on Wednesday evenings. Following a soup and bread dinner, we started a Rachel Held Evans series, a new family opening the doors of the church. Monthly vestry meetings were held and we worshiped at the nursing home located at CMMC once a month, as well as at the state home. In our lives in the community, we kept as busy as always with the many organizations in which we participate. And then COVID-19 arrived. On March 22nd, we held our first virtual worship service via Zoom. It wasn't only life in the church dramatically changed, but all of life. Concerts and fundraisers and family gatherings and all things social seemed to come to a complete stop. In reality, not all things stopped, but life certainly changed. In addition to Sunday worship on Zoom, we began to pray weekly in Centering Prayer using the same Zoom link. We used Zoom for vestry meetings, pint with the priest, and for informal small gatherings to help us stay connected. 
Vestry members were assigned members' names on a phone tree and were asked to call their list regularly. I made many calls as well. We continually, and still, fussed with Zoom and improving it for our worship experiences. We received some technology money from the diocese and purchased a laptop computer and other equipment. We used Google Slides for the blessing of the animals. We simplified the godly play Advent and Christmas story, created home versions of the story, and sent them to eight families. Beginning on May 31st, the day of Pentecost, we took advantage of a window of low COVID case numbers in Fergus County. We began to meet in person and via Zoom. In-person worship required face masks, physical distancing, and no congregational singing. As our sanctuary is small, our numbers were limited. It was a joy for many to begin to receive Holy Communion again and to worship in our beautiful little church. We began to offer delivery of Holy Communion on Saturday so those at home could receive the body and blood of Christ as well. Our window closed with increased COVID numbers in October, and on the 18th of that month, we returned to virtual worship and only a very small core of worship leaders in the sanctuary. Virtual worship has its benefits. In August, I officiated at a wedding of a couple from Virginia. The gentleman proposed to the lady and said he wanted to get married while in Montana at St. James Lewistown, quote, because I've been watching them for three months on YouTube, end quote. They knew they wanted Tom Petranek's native flute as William had heard it during worship services. Linda Porter arranged flowers and Patty Martin took pictures. Jerry Carpenter was a witness. The ceremony included nine people and four dogs and it was beautiful. They found us online. Virtual worship allows Marsha Gans to come to church from Bozeman and Tom and Marie Anderson from Spokane. It allows my kids to pop in from Washington DC and Zurich, Switzerland. It allows your kids to come to church from Kalispell and Baltimore and elsewhere. We still see Michael and Rosemary Kent, even though they are back in Inverness, Florida. Using Zoom allows us to see one another and worship together. It is not a spectator sport. Though scattered, we are a community. Beginning on October 18th, we began to offer drive up and walk up Holy Communion for 30 minutes following the conclusion of our worship service. We continue to provide delivery of Holy Communion on Saturdays. Most importantly, virtual worship helps keep us safe from COVID. In the midst of this chaos of this virus, you have continued to serve. You quilted and we blessed over 30 quilts for Grace Camp you helped make and deliver over 300 Thanksgiving Day meals to fellow members of the Lewistown community. You purchased gifts for children from the Angel Tree and rang the bell at Albertsons for the Salvation Army. You continue to reach out to one another. You continue to support one another as we have bid farewell to Patty Farley, Brian Pierce, Brad Parrish, Chubb Tuss, and Morris Shamel. You amaze me each and every day. We are living in the midst of challenges and opportunities. My earnest prayer back in March, and still is, that we come out of this as strong or stronger than when it began, and that our sense of community our love for one another would not only survive, but rather thrive.
we are living in the midst of challenges and opportunities. And there are even more challenges and opportunities awaiting. I am confident we will meet these challenges and opportunities. I know for certain God is with us and will continue to work powerfully amongst and through us. We will continue to make a difference in people's lives and God's creation. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. The text goes on to show Jesus acting with authority to confront evil, even in the household of faith. I am fascinated, I must admit, by the line, there was in their synagogue a man of an unclean spirit. So what do you think? First time guest or esteemed member of the synagogue? But, too often in the church, we identify the evil as out there and the good as in here. The great Russian novelist and ardent Orthodox Christian Alexander Solzhenitsyn said something to the effect that the line between good and evil does not go between something, the line between good and evil does not go between countries or empires or religions or political systems. The line between good and evil goes right down the middle of every human heart. Perhaps all of us have heard this Native American proverb. An old Cherokee is teaching his grandson about life. A fight is going on inside me, he said to the boy. It is a terrible fight and it is between two wolves. One is evil. He is anger, envy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, and ego. He continued, the other is good. He is joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. The same fight is going on inside you and inside every other person, too. The grandson thought about it for a minute and then asked his grandfather, which wolf will win? The old Cherokee simply replied, the one you feed. Jesus comes to remove the unclean spirits from all of us, to attack that line that goes down the middle of our hearts, to feed the good wolf. Like the man with the unclean spirit, we often wish the holy would leave us alone to lives lived of selfishness, materialism, and devotion to the pleasures of the flesh. But as the demons in our story recognize, Jesus, the living Word of God, has come to us on a mission of destruction. The Word comes to tear down the walls of separation that keep us apart. The Word comes to break the chains that keep us in bondage to sin. 
the word comes to wipe out the diseases of the soul that keep us from knowing God's love and from loving one another. This poem is ascribed to the German pastor Martin Niemöller, though its exact origin is the subject of debate. Martin Niemöller protested Hitler's anti-Semitic measures in person to the Fuhrer, was eventually arrested and then imprisoned for eight years at Sachsenhausen and Dachau from 1937 to 1945. He once confessed, it took me a long time to learn that God is not the enemy of my enemies. He is not even the enemy of his enemies. The poem describes the passivity of German intellectuals as the Nazis purged group after group of targeted people. First they came. First they came for the communists, but I was not a communist, so I did not speak out. Then they came for the socialists and the trade unionists, but I was neither, so I did not speak out. Then they came for the Jews, but I was not a Jew, so I did not speak out. And when they came for me, there was no one left to speak out for me. The word comes to tear down the walls of separation that keep us apart. The word comes to break the chains that keep us in bondage to sin. The word comes to wipe out the diseases of the soul that keep us from knowing God's love and from loving one another. The following is, is an excerpt from Law of Love found in Frederick Buechner's book, Beyond Words. Jesus said that the one supreme law is that we are to love God with all our hearts, minds, and souls, and our neighbors as ourselves. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets, is the way he put it in Matthew 22, verse 40 meaning that all lesser laws are to be judged on the basis of that supreme one. In any given situation, the lesser law is to be obeyed if it is consistent with the law of love and superseded if it isn't. The law against working on the Sabbath is an example found in the gospel. It is a question of whether or not you should perform the work of healing on the Sabbath. Jesus' answer is clear. Of course you should heal them, is his answer. Obviously, healing rather than preserving your own personal piety is what the law of love would have you do. Therefore, you put the lesser law aside. The word comes to dare, tear down the walls of separation that keep us apart. The word comes to break the chains that keep us in bondage to sin. The word comes to wipe out the diseases of the soul that keep us from knowing God's love and from loving one another. For there is no them, there is only us. There is no them, there's only us. Amen. Amen. And now if able to the congregation here present, please stand as we affirm our faith using the Nicene Creed found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. <clears throat> We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, 
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People The Prayers of the People this morning are found on page 380. Seven. <laughs> 387, Form 3. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For Helen, Joanna, the Schilke family, Gabby Olson, Stephen, Nadine Rutherford, Tom Reed, Dorothy, Susan, Shana Kellogg, Matt, Brian S., Julian Rich, Lauren, Caleb, Larry, Melissa, Shelley, Harry, Sheila Stearns, Carl Jensen, Judy Marksher, Kitty, April, Elma Decker, Linda Porter, Tom, John Northey, Mark, Char Cookson, Elizabeth, Jack, Aaron Kaufman, Colin, Kathleen Woodward, Christina, Bill Collins, Judy Fry, Heather, Gary Markshire, Tracy, Chris, Mary Brown, Jean Little, LaJada Clayton, Haley, Austin, Molly, Bill, Michael Shea, Mike Messina, Becky, Mary Jane and family, Katie Jackson, Gloria, John McPhee, Kyle and Shay Trafton family, Michael Huntley, Jordan Michelle, Mary Kay Haugen, Michael, Sister Ann Walsh, Jermaine Stivers, Terry O'Fallon, Maria Whitcraft, Liz, Elaine Killam, Jim Devine, Hannah, Steve Urosko, Jane Olson, Kathy, Heidi, Sue Kay, Natasha, Natasha, Crispin Babin, 
Juana and Ramona Abundes, Mary Hoke, Lois Sheldon, Denny Irwin. For all those in recovery, for all those serving in the military and their families, especially Sam Frank, Seth Walters, Emily Olson, Kevin Anderson, and Brandon Anderson. For those working in essential services, including Katie Jensen, Bridget Owen, Bill Holmes, Garth Hesser, and all those serving in the healthcare frontline, all those working in local businesses, social workers, truckers, sanitation workers, for all those working and attending our schools, for these we pray and give hearty thanks. And those worldwide and here in Fergus County suffering from and dying from COVID-19. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will. And those good things which we dare not, or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Returning to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's greet one another in the name of the Lord, from a distance. <laughs> peace, everyone. Peace. God's peace. Our announcements this day, um, we have an annual meeting that's coming up. Um, and that will begin about 15 minutes after worship um, is over. Um, there are a few people in attendance here and who will be over there as well. Um, I bid you grab something to eat or drink, um, take a bio break, and I hope you will come back um, for the meeting to hear the business of the last year and to do some plotting and planning for our new year. I would like, as, as, um, many, if not all of you know, we have ceramic pigs, a tradition brought to us by <clears throat> Bob and Claudia Tate from a congregation of theirs in, in Arizona. And the money that we, the chain we put in our pigs at home, is divided between Tales as Old as Time, a senior dog rescue based here in Lewistown, and SAFE, Saving Animals from Euthanasia. And we received a thank you note from Peggy Butler saying a huge thank you to everyone at St. James for your donation, support, and caring. We continue to grow and get busier, which is wonderful for all the animals we have and will continue to help. This donation will help fund our sixth spay neuter clinic in March. Signed, Peggy and all of my wonderful volunteers at SAFE. Are there other announcements? Yes, please a pause. Are there other announcements to share with one another this morning? No one's waiting. We do have Tom's 80th birthday. Yes.
So are there any other birthdays or anniversaries? Rosemary's birthday was on the 20th. Rosemary's birthday was on the 20th. So we will pray for Rosemary. Anybody else? I'm looking. Nobody's waving a wild hand. Happy birthday, Tom. Happy birthday, Rosemary. Please turn with me to page 830 in the Book of Common Prayer, prayer number 50, as we pray for our friends celebrating birthdays. I didn't need to do that. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings and come into his courts. to reconcile us to you 
the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. This is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and those who want to love him more. So come. You who have much faith and you who have little. You who have been here often and you have just arrived. You who have tried to follow and you who have failed. Come, because it is the Lord who invites you. It is his will that those who want him should meet him here. Communion from the Armed Forces Prayer Book. 
in union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. <clears throat> I await your coming in glory. Since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Page 365, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 616, verses 1, 2, 3, and 5. Oh,